The Bible says in Psalm 145 and verse 7, They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. Psalm 30 and verse 4, Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. So I want to talk about scriptures becoming a memory, making memories in the scriptures. The first thing I want to talk about is the pages are pictures of past fellowship. I really love to look at old family pictures and pictures from when I was a little kid. It's just weird to me that at one time that that specific time in that picture was the present time. And what I'm living in now was at one time the distant future. The pictures show something that seems like a whole different story. A whole nother life. Because Psalm 90 and verse 9 says, For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. We spend our years as a tale that's told. Looking back at old pictures can bring back memories more than just about anything. And there is one really sad thing about it. And that is that so many times I wish that there were more pictures a lot of times I wish that there were more pictures of the two years that me and my wife dated before we got married. So I could go back and relive those memories. Just like the old pictures, I, I love to pull out my Bibles and look at those notes and the pages of the Bible become pictures of the past. In Jeremiah 23 and verse 18 it says, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? You see, the marks and the references and the underlines and the circled phrases become memory markers when I look at those old Bible pages. And I look back in my Ruckman Reference Bible and the book of Revelation, and I remember the first time I went verse by verse through a book of the Bible. I remember the preacher I was listening to at the time and even where I was sitting in my old house and what pen I was using. Just that one page in Revelation chapter 1 brought back so many memories for me. And we aren't supposed to dwell in the past and live in regret, but there are some things to remember. As the Bible says in Exodus 13, 3, And Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage. For by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. God consistently talks about how he brought them out of the land of Egypt. Search that in the scriptures. There are some things that you don't want to forget. There are some things he didn't want them to forget. There have been times when I was sitting there reading my Bible in the past, and my daughter accidentally ripped one of my pages, or wrote on it with a crayon, or spilled water on it, or drew on it with a pen, and at first I'm all bummed out, and then I say, oh well, you just made another memory. Now, every time I look at the page, I remember when my da my daughter was a toddler. And, and, I mean, if you don't have your Bible around your kids, then they won't see you in the Bible. It would be better to have your kids get sticky hands on the pages than for them to never see you stick your hand on the pages. It says in Proverbs 22, 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Your kids ought to see you in the Bible and have memories when they grow older of thinking, my, my parents were always in the Bible, in the living room, reading the Bible, in their room, reading the Bible. That should be their memory. The pages become pictures of past fellowship with God. When you are in the scripture, it is, it, it, when you're in the scriptures, it's like you are sitting in a chair and God's just talking your ear off. Somebody said, God just never speaks to me. Well, ask them, when was the last time you read your Bible? That is how God speaks to you. People's view of Christianity is this emotional feeling thing, and they are waiting for God to talk to them or give them this feeling, and yet they think the Bible is just something you leave on the coffee table or on Grandma's bookshelf. They never pick it up and read it. That's how God talks to you. But the pictures, the pages become pictures of past fellowship. And it gives you memories when you look back at your Bible and see all those underlinings and markings and references. Now the next thing, the song takes you back. In Colossians 
let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You know how you can hear a song and it can give you so much nostalgia and it takes you back into the decade where you used to listen to that song as a lost person? When you got saved, the Lord puts a new song in you. And you should be in the Word enough to where when you hear a preacher quote a verse or someone talk about a certain scripture that you can remember a time when you were studying that same passage, a time when you got help from that same verse, and it should flood your mind with memories. And if you're consistently in the Bible, that's going to happen a lot. There are some verses that are quoted, and it just brings me back to the year, the place, and even where I was sitting when I was studying that actual verse. And many times I listen to the audio Bible very consistently. Many times when I get to a certain chapter, uh, like when Alexander Scorby's reading the, uh, reading the Bible on the audio Bible, I can remember years back when I was listening to that same chapter over and over again. For example, I was listening to Acts 2 not too long ago, and it brought me about 10 years back when I first got saved. I would sit in a grocery store parking lot every morning before work and listen to Acts chapter 2 over and over because I had some oneness Pentecostals trying to give me a fit about Acts chapter 2 at work. So I sit and listen to that over and over. And while, while I was listening to that, it brought me back those memories of sitting in that parking lot early in the morning when it was dark, listening to that over and over, trying to figure it out. The scriptures should be like a song that takes you back. And when someone asks you how long you've been in the Bible or a Bible student, you ought to be able to tell them that you've been in it for a long time. And you ought to be have answers to their questions. Uh, as Peter talks about, be always ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. But the song takes you back. The scriptures take you back. The next thing is memory loss. Some Christians used to be in the Bible consistently and then something happens. They get out of the scriptures for maybe years at a time. And while they still retain a lot of what they learned, a good portion of it is fuzzy. Romans 12, 2 says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The renewing of the mind isn't something that is only available once. When you get out of your backslid condition, you can go back and get plugged up and transfer all that scripture back into your brain. You may have gotten off into sin and gotten memory loss and forgotten a lot of what you learned. You're not as polished in the scriptures as it used to be. But all God has to do is plug you back up to the book and transfer it right back over. It's never okay to go off into sin, but that doesn't mean things are over because you did. You can fix your memory loss. Just get the book back out and start reading it again. Now, another thing is making new memories. Did you know that there are men who were devout King James Bible believers, but something happened and they became Bible correctors and Bible doubters. They saw these new Bibles and they were fancy and they were pretty and the leather smelled good. And you know, when someone leaves their mate, leaves their husband or wife, many times they say they're new a uh, woman or man just understands them so well. Many times when a person leaves the King James Bible, they say, I can just understand it so much better. Uh, then they make new memories with the new versions of the Bible. In Second Samuel twenty one sixteen, it says, And Ishbi Binab, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. So you see these guys, these imposters like John MacArthur, they say I got a, uh, they they've got the 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 real Bible, or the best Bible, so they copy those guys and they say I got to get me an ESV. I mean John MacArthur is a smart man, he's got all he needs to be looked at as a spiritual giant. He's got a big church, he's got a ministry that he's had for before I was even born, and he's got the new sword, and he slays people with it. He deceives people into believing the, the new versions are okay, that uh, Calvinism's okay, lordship salvation is okay. But you know what happens? 
uh, they get those new Bibles because they got slain by the spiritual sword, that new spiritual sword, that that same type of thing that Ishbi Binab was was girded with, he being girded with a new sword. And they read that for a while and they make new memories with it. But they always end up comparing it with their first love, the King James Bible. You have to go and make new memories with the new Bibles, but they never compare to the King James. And I've realized that not everyone who came, claims to be King James only is a King James Bible believer. I've realized that some men are King James only because that is the old paths. And if they want to be a part of that old paths club, they carry around the King James to be more spiritual. They think it makes them look so macho to get up there and say, I'm King James only. And everybody cheers and they just kind of just look like an egomaniac or something. But he thinks he's more spiritual if he uses the King James. So that's why he uses it. He has to keep it under his arm to be a part of this club, this old past club. It's almost as important to him as his suit and tie. But it's only important to him because he has to keep up a certain reputation. But if you're like a Bible believer, then you're King James because you love it. And then when the old paths club leaves the old paths, you're still sticking with the book. But did you ever notice how when a preacher starts using another version of the Bible, that he will still end up quoting the King James. So he is up behind the pulpit preaching to a bunch of other Bible correctors. And he says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I just heard that not too long ago, a guy using the new versions. Yet when he quoted John 3.16, he quoted the King James. So he quotes the King James. Because his version said one and only son, not only begotten son. It's because the old memories are better. The first love was better. He just traded off his first love for a cheap, cheap thrill. He traded off his King James for something else. It's like somebody making out with their new girlfriend, but yet calling them their old wife's name. You knew she was better. You were tempor temporarily bored with your first wife, so you traded her in for a cheap knockoff. Your first love didn't want your money. The King James isn't copywritten. The new versions have to continuously change so that they can keep getting a new copyright. It's all about your money with the new versions. Just like when an old man traded his wife in for a young blonde. She just wanted him for his money. But the King James isn't copywritten. The new versions are. And you'll always... They always compare it with the King James because the old one is better. The next thing, don't waste a chance for a new memory. So you have got a King James Bible. You have made it further than a lot of people if you do. If you believe it, then you've made it even further. If you just believe it. Now don't waste a chance to make a new memory. Ephesians 5, 15 through 16 says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. It's like family time. A lot of dads are coming home and going into their man cave to play Call of Duty instead of spending time with their kids. They're wasting a memory opportunity. Something I noticed about my daughter is that she remembers me playing with her and making her laugh. And when all you do is scroll on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and YouTube, you're missing all these memory opportunities. Do you really remember all the nonsense you scrolled through on Facebook? No. But you remember what God gives you from his word. The Facebook scrolling gives you a temporary dopamine spike. But the Bible settles up in your heart. And when I'm excited about a certain study in the Bible, which is pretty much every day, that happy chemical starts releasing all in my brain. And it gives me continual happiness. Not just this temporary stuff that this entertainment gives us today. So come back to your first love. Revelation 2, four says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Maybe you are a Bible corrector, and you used to be a King James Bible believer. Maybe you are a Bible believer and you're backslid. Maybe you're a Bible believer and you're just flat out lazy. Whatever you are, you need to remember your first love Ditch the hussy you're with right now, that new version, and come back to the blessed old book, the King James Bible. 
But here are some memory helpers. When you're okay, you've got your King James Bible, you want to get back into it, you want to make memories in it. Here are some memory helpers. The first thing is you can do is write it down. Get some index cards. Go to Romans. Write down the whole first chapter of Romans. Write it down. And then pull that out of your pocket throughout the day. Memorize the whole thing. Uh, quote four words to yourself. Say those four words over and over till you have those first four words m memorized. And then do that for the whole book of Romans. You're going to make memories in the scriptures. The next thing you can do, take a picture. You know how when you uh, take a picture of something, it gives you a memory. Open your Bible, take a picture of it with your phone, and then when you pull out your phone, look at that scripture, memorize it that way. The next thing you can do, record your voice. You know these those old video recordings you have of your family and things like that? You make memories that way. Record your voice. Get the iPhone. Get the voice recorder on iPhone and record yourself saying the scriptures. Put your AirPods in. Play that back over. Put it on repeat. You can memorize it that way. Another thing is repeat it to somebody else. If you learn the scriptures enough to where you can repeat it to somebody else, then you know I'm pretty good because... See, a lot of times people know something really well, and then when they get in front of people, they forget what they were going to say. If you've really got it in your memory, then you can quote it to somebody else. The next thing is to keep thinking about it. You know, a lot of memories, you forget a lot of things that happened in the past because you quit thinking about them. You push them very far back in your mind, but if you will keep thinking about it every day, then you won't never forget it. It's like that with the scriptures. Keep thinking about them. But the last thing I want to say is don't let your memories haunt you. They'll come back to bite you. Because if you make all your memories doing things that has nothing to do with God and the scriptures, you're going to get to the judgment seat of Christ and you're going to wish you could go back and do something. Use your time wisely. You, your memories are going to haunt you when you get to the judgment seat of Christ. You're going to wish that you spent more time in the scriptures. But this has been just a quick study about making memories out of the scriptures.